This is Jamie Dyer welcoming you to another edition of the Quocast. I said I was going to do it and we're definitely going to do this now. An unboxing of the deluxe edition of Thirsty Work. The album was first released in 1994, reached a peak position in the UK album charts of 13. Um, it's seen as something of a departure. It does have its fans, but um, admittedly probably not as many as the band might have liked at the time. Um, it's, a, it's a bit of a weird one. I have my own personal feelings about it that are tied to nostalgia and other things, but I do admit it's not the most Quo-like album. Um, there was a remastered edition of this with bonus tracks released in the mid-2000s, and this uh, was released in 2020. If you see one of these and you like the album or you just want to add to your collection, pick it up because at some point uh, the price is likely to go up. It's been out a little while now. Um, the Rock To You Drop is still at £21. I paid about £12 for this. So we've got this front cover here on this unboxing. This is the uh, front cover featuring this bottle. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at this design with the words thirsty work and then status quo, um, that famous font, sort of a deviation but still in that famous way I guess. And yeah, a really evocative image, perhaps says something about the music inside. Let's go to the back cover. Uh, we've got the beer cans as is on the original version of that. And then we have a track listing that consists of the original album and there's 16 tracks here, but I'm going to read them out anyway. Going Nowhere, I Didn't Mean It, Confidence, Point of No Return, Sail Away, Like It or Not, Soft in the Head, Queenie, Lover of the Human Race, Sherry Don't Fail Me Now, Rude Awakening Time, Back on My Feet, Restless, Chow Chow, Tango and Sorry. Um, sorry, of course, being... Uh, a song that Rossi Frost wrote back in the late 70s, early 80s, and Demis Roussos um, recorded it. And um, disc two contains the following tracks, and it's listed as Thirsty Work bonus tracks. Survival, which was a B-side. In fact, all of these were B-sides here. She Knew Too Much, Tossing and Turning, Down to You, Beautiful, and I Do and democracy. There's also an acoustic version of I Didn't Mean It, an extended version of Sherry Don't Fail Me Now, an orchestral version of Restless, uh, the hooligan version of I Didn't Mean It, and four live tracks from Stockholm in 1994. Oh, three live tracks from Stockholm in 1994, Going Nowhere, Soft in the Head, Rude Awakening Time, and then Restless, live in London that same year. Not going to edit that, people make mistakes. Now, I was really interested to note, and I don't think the other deluxe edition that I have, Rocking All Over the World, does this either, but I was surprised there wasn't like an outer casing on this to like keep it safe. Like I've got a few things that are in this sort of digi pack type thing and they've got like an outer thing. Now admittedly that outer casing gets a little bit scratched and mauled around and like if you get it um, separated from everything else, if you have little ones around they can kind of squash it by accident. But it just opens up here into these two um, pieces of artwork, the single um, cover art for Sherry Don't Fail Me Now featuring a live image there, and uh, one for I Didn't Mean It. Uh, extra points to those who can name the faces depicted on this cover for I Didn't Mean It. Um, yeah, so we've got inside here, inside this flap, we've got the cover art for Restless, and <laughs> this, this comes out quite a way, doesn't it? That is the cover art for the live tour that year. 100% pure quo, fully um, embracing that thirsty work kind of drinking thing that year. And we've got disc one there, um, which is a different colour 
to the original album. I think the original album is, is um, I don't know, I'll have to have a look at that, won't I? I don't think it's that colour anyway. And then we've got disc two there. So yeah, what have we got behind the disc here? Oh, so we've got some of the images from inside the booklet. And speaking of the booklet, if we go inside here, we've got a booklet with an interview with Francis Rossi from 2019, all the original images from the book as well. Um, that read-up's quite interesting. Uh, Dave Ling is the journalist who did the liner notes for that. It's a very interesting read. Some bits in there I didn't know. And so, yeah, this whole thing is quite a nice little package, I think. And while this album doesn't have its fans, it's nice to see them uh, package this up in such uh, a nice way. So that for those who do like it, they get something a little extra special. And I look forward to listening to that um, fully remastered as well. So yeah, uh, what do you think of the Thirsty Work album? Have you got this deluxe edition? Does it stack up um, against all the others that they've released? I think so. I think we've come into the era with these uh, in recent times where um, the material, the extra material, they're not really using bootlegs anymore. Some of those 70s ones, because of the lack of material or available stuff there, they um, went more towards bootlegs, I think, to try and add value. Whereas with this, I think like the live recordings are from professional grades or radio recordings. So um, they have an extra bit of quality. And that I think that's because we're in a much newer stage. And, you know, by this point, Quo are well, well, well established. So it was probably more worth recording it as well in the first place um, and keeping it. So yeah, thirsty work. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you again for another episode of the Quocast. Mm -hmm.